Hi, welcome to Meta Perfume. I am Emily, here again today with Twixie. She's sleeping. We took a nice long walk to the lake earlier, so she's tired. Um, I'm gonna go over this sampler that I got a while ago and have been meaning to review, but I just haven't gotten around to it. So today I'm gonna cover the Henry Rose um, sampler set that I picked up. There are they gave me 10 uh, little sample vials, but only nine fragrances. I think I got two of the Flora Cornivora. So uh, let's get into it. Um, so I'll start with the Flora Carnivora. Well, let me start by just saying a little bit about this brand. I think Michelle Pfeiffer is the, she was the spokesperson for it. It might be her brand. I know that they were marketing as like a very clean and transparent fragrance company with simple um, formulations and uh, kind of saying that you know most fragrances don't list their ingredients and may use some questionable ingredients so um, this was supposed to be a clean uh, fragrance company and this little sampler packaging is pretty cute. I like it. It's like a little paper thing and then there were five. I took one of them out but it comes with five in each one. Um, I think that's that's cute. I like that. A little interesting. Um, and yeah I mean generally I think it'd be nice to have ten. Not a repeat of one that I'm not that keen on but you know, we'll take what we can get. <laughs> I know that these are also, um, apparently they were launched at different times, so it's not like they all came out at the same time. Some of them looks like launched in 2019, some of them in 2021, um, maybe some more recent. But the, the fragrances themselves, I found to be a little bit hit or miss, maybe on the whole a bit underwhelming, unfortunately. Um, so let me just get into it one at a time and we'll start with the uh, Queens and Monsters fragrance. So this Queens and Monsters is a, um, all of these by the way are unisex fragrances and Queens and Monsters has a top note of Petite Grain and Violet Leaf or top notes, middle notes of Jasmine and Freesia and then the base of sandalwood, vanilla bean, ambroxan, and patchouli. Now, in the nose, this is a woody fragrance to me. I think that petite grain kind of adds a woodiness, even though I don't think it's wood, but it's definitely not, um, not sweet. There's nothing really sweet in this fragrance. It's, I'd say it leans a little more masculine. It's kind of a fresh, woody fragrance. It's, it's nice. I'm not, I'm not impressed, I guess, by like the, it's sort of like not anything remarkable, I guess you would say. It's wearable, Queens and Monsters, but it's not groundbreaking. And <laughs> that's a phrase I try never to say because I feel like it's overused in perfume channel videos, but it is. It's something that's, I would say, it doesn't have much new kind of component. So, Queens on Monsters is, is okay. It's wearable. And I'd say it's probably better on a guy to, to my nose than a girl. Unless you like like a really kind of woody, slightly masculine unisex fragrance. <sighs> Queens and Monsters. Next, I have the Flora... No, I'll do torn. <laughs> sorry, torn next. So that's the one I picked up. So, sorry, I'm, I'm a little bit. Um, I've been sick for like three weeks. I got back from Las Vegas and I had this fever, and then it turned into a head cold and a chest cold that just wouldn't quit. So, it's still hanging out a little. Hopefully, I don't cough too much in this video. But all right. So the next one I'll go through is torn. Torn is a very simple composition. There are just two notes. It's vanilla and vetiver. It's, it's 
got a nice opening. I like this. I like it better than the Queens and Monsters, I think. I think it's a little bit, I mean, simple compositions, I think, are kind of exciting to me. Let me see what those fragrances, notes, kind of do. I'm going to say the, the balance of um, vetiver and vanilla is pretty equal, which I think is nice because then it's more of a new thing than it would be if it was really predominant in one or the other of those notes. I would say this is kind of a cooler weather fragrance. The vanilla offsets the earthiness of vetiver. I think vetiver is a pretty earthy note. It's not really a sweet vanilla, but it's like, it warms it up and kind of makes it just a little more cozy. Yeah, torn. Vanilla and vetiver. Not too bad. <laughs> um, next, the, the dark is night. I'll go into that one. No, I don't like using test strips in my videos. I don't like watching other people's perfume reviews that have test strips in them, so I don't use them, which means that basically I'm spraying myself. <laughs> darkest night. This one, it's a very simple composition again. It's um, just patchouli and vanilla bean. Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, I think this one got one of the higher ratings in uh, Fragrantica when I looked it up. Vanilla and patchouli, you know, those are pretty, pretty common notes, but when you strip it down and you just put those two in, again, it's kind of similar, I guess, to the torn. Well, it's vanilla bean and patchouli, apparently, but again, they're putting like an earthy note with a vanilla to kind of warm it up. <laughs> Again, I think it's a pretty equal balance between the two, so it kind of makes it a little bit of a new thing. It's not really like a patchouli or vanilla heavy fragrance. It's kind of like at equal parts, I think. Yeah, this one is nice too. I'm, I'm going to say I kind of wish it was a little bit more distinctive, like the the range of the fragrances if you've got two where there are just two notes and one of them is vanilla in each of them that's a little bit like come on really <laughs> like, it's nice though i mean it's not it's not a bad fragrance i could see myself using this sample maybe in the fall i think all of these are sort of like fall winter fragrances I'm going to say this one is pretty much like middle of the road unisex, as well as that other torn that I just went through. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if I was like giving them a rating, I would say like Queens and Monsters would get about a five and Torn and Darkest Night would get like a six and a half or seven. Well, six and a half. Yeah, not bad, not bad. <laughs> um, and then, no, I'm gonna save this one. That one will be saved. We'll go through Flora Carnivora. So, Flora Carnivora is a little more complex. It has got a top of neroli and African orange flower. My notes died. <laughs> Middle of jasmine and tuberose. And then a base of musk, amber, Haitian vetiver, and Texas cedar. Yeah, this is like an interesting kind of like woody white floral fragrance. Uh, it's, it's unisex, but... Yeah, I guess it's pretty much middle of the road unisex. Yeah, 
yeah, I'm not, I'm not against it. I would say I don't like it quite as much as the, the two simple vanilla earthy note combo ones we just talked about. But it doesn't have anything like offensive. I would say this again is a little bit more masculine, slightly more masculine, even though it's a white floral, which is interesting. I don't know. And again, it's sort of similar to the Queens and Monsters. It's like, all right, it's a woody white floral, but is it unique or interesting? And I'm going to say not really. Like, I don't think people would give you compliments on this. But if you liked it, you know, and you have to like white florals, obviously, then you could dig it. I mean, I guess it's one of those things. You gotta try it on. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend buying buying these fragrances. And getting the sampler is nice though, because then you get to try nine. So yeah, Flora Carnivora, I'd say I'd give like a five and a half out of a ten. Um, okay. So I'm gonna go into, I'm gonna save the last one in that pack for later. And I'm gonna go into the second box. So again, this little Little box is cute. I'll start with the Fog. Fog again is a two note composition. It is um, vetiver and musk and that's all. Excuse me. Which is interesting because they have another the vetiver and vanilla. Let's put it on this. They give you a card that says a gift card for $20 off your favorite one. So that's nice if you want to buy a whole size. Hmm. Yeah, I think this one got the lowest rating on Fragrantica, the fog. It's earthy, it's a little bit more masculine than the rest of them. I would say I would, I would want to smell this on a guy, I think. And I think this is probably one that really depends on your your skin and your, your body chemistry with the fragrance. I mean, because it's kind of like, it's not a skin scent, but it, it's definitely like approaching that sort of a scent. Musk and vetiver. I'd say it's maybe a little more heavy on the musk. Uh, it's a nice woody musky yeah i'm gonna say this is a guy let's smell it on a guy might be all right and but for me i'm i'm probably you know not gonna wear that too much so fog <laughs> by henry rose <laughs> is that um now the next one they have is called jake's house and jake's house has four notes it has, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is this problem not having test strips. Okay, I'm gonna spray it on the box. I'm gonna spray it on the box. Um, Jake's house has neroli, watery notes, musk, and honey, which sounds like a strange combination <laughs> to me. And the result is a little strange, I'm gonna say. It is a little bit. Weird. I know neroli is one of those notes that's like kind of love hate. Like some people really don't like neroli and some people like it. I'm on the fence. I sometimes will can get into it and sometimes I'm not not a fan, but this is this is interesting. I don't know. This is I guess it is kind of unique, but I'm not gonna say it's super pleasant. <laughs> Neroli and honey and musk and watery nose. And it's also not very distinctive again from some of the other things, even though you know the, the notes are different. They're all sort of similar, I guess. Sort of like a, a earthy woody, even though there's not woody notes in this, it smells sort of woody. Yeah, Jake's house is just kind of it's okay. <laughs> I'm going to give this one like a four and a half <laughs> out of ten. <laughs> um, 
and yeah, that's okay. A little more masculine leaning. I mean, you'd think maybe it would be a little more feminine with the honey, but it, it's not. It's balanced out by those watery notes and the neroli enough that it's unisex or maybe slightly masculine. Okay. So that's Jake's house. So the names on these are kind of interesting. Next, I have one that's very complex. Um, the name is Smith with a Y, S-M-Y-T-H. And, oh my gosh, I'll put it over here. <laughs> uh, the top notes are green apple, melon, watery notes, a sorbet, and pineapple. Come on. There we go. And then the middle notes are star jasmine. So we've got we've got a lot with jasmine in it. There's been three different kinds of jasmine: just jasmine, jasmine sunbach, and now star jasmine. Middle notes apricot and the. Um, Star Jasmine, Apricot, and Tea in the middle. Oh, this one's having trouble spinning. Sorbet. Oh, sorry. Base notes of Isoe, Super, Musk, Sandalwood, and White Woods. God, there's a lot of alcohol in the nose of this. Like, I sprayed it a couple times, and right now I'm getting alcohol. <laughs> Thank you for the minute to kind of settle down. Now, I, I feel like in theory, with the notes that are listed here, this could be something I really like. Like, I really like pineapple and tea and green apple. I think, you know, it's an interesting combination that I don't see much or anything, like, similar. Okay, the, the alcohol is finally gone. And it is a little bit more feminine. As you expect with all those fruity notes. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say I like this one a little better. I mean, the opening is alcoholic, so that's unfortunate. Um, but as that goes away, you get something a little bit more subtle. Subtly fruity, watery, fresh, a little bit of tea. I'm not going to say the tea is very heavy. And the sandalwood, or I'm sorry, the jasmine isn't very heavy either. It's like not quite as woody, even though there's white woods and sandalwood in this. It's not quite as woody as most of the other ones. And it's definitely the most fruity of them. So I want to say this one leans just a little bit more feminine. It can be worn probably in a little bit warmer weather. Again, it doesn't seem super unique or different to me, though. I mean, it's a nice fragrance. I'm going to give this one like a 7. 7 out of 10. <laughs> and given the notes, I, I wish it was a little bit higher. But, I mean, of them all, I'd say this might be my second favorite. Yeah. That's the Smith. All right, second to the last, we have Last Light. Now this one, <laughs> this one I think got pretty low reviews on uh, Fragrantica. I gotta put it. There's fragrance everywhere. <laughs> mm. Like, now, the problem I'm having right now is that my phone is full, so I'm, I'm not really going to be able to edit this, and I'm sorry about that. I can't, when I edit it, I have to, like, create a bunch of space on my phone. I am planning to buy myself a computer within, like, the next month, I hope. Fingers crossed. Um, and then I'll be able to hopefully upload more, do a lot more editing. But for now, I basically have to, like, load what I film. Unfortunately, I'm sorry for that. Um, okay, so I'm just going to say... I'm putting this on my knee. <laughs> no, that's very unprofessional, but this operation is kind of. Yeah, 
I can see why it gets a low rating. <laughs> the notes of this last light are musk, floral notes, and patchouli. They didn't even put any effort into like describing the notes, like floral notes as a group is kind of a cop out if you ask me. Oh, it's a little bit weird. <laughs> They do smell what smells like some kind of fruit. I mean, it doesn't really smell that floral. Yeah, it's kind of unremarkable, I guess. Last light. It maybe smells a little bit like cassis. Interesting. Okay. So last light, I'm, I'm giving like a four or a three. We give it a three <laughs> out of 10. <laughs> not, not super high. Um, yeah. <laughs> last though, last but not least, and this is the windows down. Now I'm just going to spray this over top and put it on like I'm putting, wearing it because it's my favorite for sure of all of them. It's a complex fragrance. It's got top notes of Earl Grey tea, which I do love. I love Earl Grey tea in the fragrance. Bergamot, neroli, and grapefruit. Grapefruit, also a favorite of mine. Then the middle has Spanish broom, which is a floral note, yellow floral. I never heard of or seen in a fragrance before. So a little bit of kind of interesting uniqueness there, which is good. Orange blossom and jasmine are also in the middle. And then in the base, it has um, musk, oak moss, white musk, and guyac wood. I really like Gayak wood as a note. Oh, these sprayers are not the greatest. Yeah, I feel like this one is the most interesting of all of them. Like this one to me gives me like, this is something I haven't smelled before. This is something I feel like they put a little more effort into <laughs> the creation of it. And the the freshness of it, you know, it's not, the middle floral notes are kind of taking a back seat to the tea and grapefruit, and then the base with the white musk and the guyac wood. So generally, I think this one is my favorite. And if I was going to use this coupon for $20 off, I would definitely pick the windows down. Um, I'd probably give this one like an eight out of 10. And it's again, I think it's like a daytime fragrance. I think it's kind of uplifting. It's kind of like fresh with a little, you know, citrus edge, citrus in the light woods. The woods aren't super heavy. Obviously it's got oak moss and musk, two different kinds of musk. Yeah, I'd say this would be like a nice daytime fragrance, probably all year round. It, it could go. It's not heavy. It's not super light. It's just kind of middle of the road in the longevity. Gosh, it's been a while since I got these, honestly. So I'm, I'm going to say the longevity is sort of like in the middle. Like it's not, they're not bad. They don't wear away immediately and they don't last forever. They sort of last like an average amount of time usually, which I think is like five or six hours, you know. Yeah. Windows down is my favorite. I'm going to give that one the highest, <laughs> the best review. And this has been a long video, but thank you for sticking with me. I really appreciate you. Um, oh, I did do a giveaway of Blanche Bet, And right after this, I am picking a random person and I will reach out to you in the comments and request your Instagram or Facebook, probably Instagram, um, handle so I can DM you and uh, figure out how to get you the Blanche Bet. So that's coming soon. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you for subscribing. I hope you all have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.